Bob here with David Keenan, um, a brilliant music writer and an absolutely brilliant author as well. Uh, vociferous, acidic writing style, I would say, pretty wild, on the edge of rock and roll. But there's something we don't know about you. There's something, you have an obsession which we would not expect, which is... Well, I, my term for it is householding. Um, and that's a term that I got from the poets, uh, the poet Robert Duncan and the artist Jess when they were living together in San Francisco. And they were very much into sort of creating their own environment and making their own environment reflect their obsessions and interests. And, you know, I, I replaced the word homemaking because when you call yourself a homemaker, there's something that people think that's a demeaning thing or a thing about holding people back, especially if it's, if it's a woman. It seemed like homemaking is somehow demeaning when you can... And it, which makes no sense to me because it's like, is it less demeaning to have a career working for a faceless multinational than it is to actually set down roots where you are and care for the group of people around you and the immediate environment? So when I was growing up, um, I shared a room with my brother, my little brother. And at one point, my dad said I could move into the loft um, if I wanted to have my own room. And at the same time, I discovered this book. And I, I, I might be remembering this title wrong, but I think it was called A Room of Your Own. And it was a guide for young people, for girls and boys, to have projects to sort of do up their own room. And so I had this empty loft space and I had this book. And it was weird. It was almost like it had never occurred to me before that you could have that effect on your environment, that you could choose to transform your environment. Because I didn't grow up in a very bohemian household. So our house was a sort of house where there was like, wasn't really any books or records or anything like that. Rooms were pretty sparse and there would be like ornaments. You know, you'd have an ornament here or an ornament there. And that was about it. So this was a revelation that you could sort of transform your environment. So I was doing things when I was a kid, like on my chest of drawers, I cut out some card which I painted. So I had a painted front on all my chest of drawers. I built my, my own bookshelves and I had that little ticker tape thing. So I had sections in the bookshelf. I then mounted a bookcase to the wall because I would collect fossils and uh, uh, birds feathers and things like that. So I had a permanent display. And then I discovered this book. So that, that was the beginning of my obsession. I've always wanted to bring my environment to where I am. And then I discovered this other book called uh, Woodstock Handmade Homes. Absolutely mind-blowing. The guy goes around Woodstock in the, I think it's the early 70s, and just photographs all these handmade houses. And just the aesthetic, the inside of these houses especially, I realised that I was just a total hippie. This was the environment I wanted to live in. Because I think what the hippies kind of did was they, they ritualised their environment and they made it ritual spaces. So I became obsessed with this idea that you could make your own living space a ritual space and various spaces that could have different ritual functions. So the kitchen is central to me. I have a kitchen, an old wooden table. I cook every night, every single night from scratch. It's a part of a ritual. When I finish my work, I move through there. I have a stereo in there. So I put on a full LP, I listen to it while I'm getting the ingredients ready. And that helps ritualize my day because I write in another room as well. But I, I've de over the years, I've developed certain rules. I have certain rules for my, for my houses, certain things I don't allow in the house, for instance. I don't allow television. I don't have a TV. And one, because I don't really have any interest in TV and it distracts me from the work I need to get done. But a big reason for it is, is TVs are fucking ugly. They're such ugly pieces of furniture that I just don't like to have them in my house. I'd say the same for something like, say, a desktop computer. I won't have a desktop computer sitting around the house. I can't stand it. Um, I go for things like, I like, oh, I like to try and find furniture. I don't buy any modern furniture. I don't buy furniture new. But So most of the furniture I have is inherited bought second hand or often found on the streets. I live in the West End. People throw out amazing stuff in the West End of Glasgow. So I walk down the lanes all the time and you're always blown away with the beautiful sort of little furniture that you can find there. So I became obsessed by all that. And one of the things, the lessons it taught me, and this is another lesson that um, I have an allotment as well. So I do have a hut, which is kind of like a Woodstock handmade home up there as well, which has always been my dream. But one thing I've realised is I don't like to spend a lot of money on my environment because I, I, I discovered this thing that if you look hard enough and you're creatively imaginative enough, everything that you need is always right in front of you. It's one of these weird artistic, spiritual kind of lessons. What you need is always right there. So when I'm, I have a building project coming me at an allotment or I want to build, I want some new shelves in the kitchen or something like that, I simply look around and I say, well, what do I have here? What could I improvise with? I use wooden boxes all the time. I'm obsessed by old wooden packing crates. I use them for bookcases. I use them to store all my uh, dried goods and spices in my kitchen. Again, I find them a lot. I love them. Um, I have a lot of plants. I'm surrounded by plants. It's another part of my ritual every day is spending probably at least an hour tending my plants, watering, watering them, trimming them. Um, 
and I make sure they're all new nice pots. I like original Victorian terracotta pots because I also feel this is another big lesson. If you really care for your environment and you really care for the things they have, you generate that kind of worth yourself. And, and some of this sort of comes back at you as a form of inspiration. So it's a thing like objects. Objects kind of want to be loved in a way. They want to be placed in interesting ways and then they sort of give back an incredible energy. So I think it's just seeing what you've got there and really caring for these sort of things, these small things. You know, as you get older, a friend of mine's dying of cancer, never mind in the middle of all this uh, pandemic stuff. He's dying of cancer and he's, he's not much older than me and it is, it is terminal. And he's choosing between whether he should extend his life for a little, little bit longer or whether and do the chemo or whether he should end it. Um, or why you should just let it go, is what I mean. And at first I thought, well, why 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 doesn't he um he didn't he didn't say he had any big ambition to do any big life change thing. He knew he was dying. And I at first I was shocked. I was like, well, why doesn't he want to go and do something like travel the world or go and do some incredible big mad thing? But then I realized, well, well, what would I do if I was given that same death sentence? And do you know what? What I realized is I would do the same thing that I do every day. You know, because it is these small things, it's these little trans these things that are the most important that you realise. The magical things are sitting with a cup of tea at your window, with a window open, surrounded by everything, the environment you put together, flowers around you, here on the birds outside the window. It is as beautiful as that. It's as beautiful as walking into a kitchen that you've handmade, that you've found every single part of, putting some music on and making some food. So I realised it was these little small things and the amount of effort you put into them. It transforms your life, and that is really the big things. So that's what householding is for me. The trans, the, tra the daily transformation of your reality and also having a great gratitude for these tiny little beautiful things. And again, hey, what pleasure. I mean, I'm looking at a pile of absolute tiny little midget uh, uh, Victorian terracotta pots. They're so small. I just found them. And I'm so in love with them. I just sit them on my desk. And I just look at them as like a sort of a, a object of meditation. That's what householding does for me. I mean, really... Yeah, I, I'm a homemaker, absolutely. I think that's my, my Taurus. My Taurus background is very much about roots. I saw this joke about taurines during lockdown, and it said, Taurus during lockdown, home improvement plus soup. That sums it up for me. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm a Taurus. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. You it. Well, because we, all, we both dress well. This is another thing about caring for yourself. We both actually look after our appearance. We don't, you and I don't really dress like sort of underground guys. You know what I mean? But I think that's another thing. It's you bring it on every level. You care for every aspect of yourself. There's no days off for style in my book. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I don't go off camera or off mic and drop into like a pair of tracky bottoms. You know, it's never going to happen. You know, and I think it's just bringing that same care to every aspect of your life. To me, that's householding. And also householding, I have a non-traditional household. I mean, we don't have children, um, but we have loads of friends. So our household is a space for friends to come together as well and to hang out and to enjoy each other's company and sit in the kitchen. My kitchen's become a wee bit of a legendary space, you know, because people who hang out there, you know yourself, you get a bit of food, you get the drinks going, you get the stereo on. It's just got that vibe. And that's for me as being a householder as well. It's been this little nexus to bring other people in who are from in my immediate circle, you know.